Okay, Mamu, I'm gonna. Yes. It's just a piggyback on what Holly is saying. Ne? Also, how many countries do we have in this continent, guys? A lot. 54. 54. And you put all 54 people in a row. You put all 50 people in a row from where they come from. Our hair is not the same yeah. as African yeah. people. Yeah. So, when to me, to me, so when you say to me, so when you so there are hybrids of South Africans, hybrids of people from Botswana, Namibia, Zambia. If you put us all in a line, that's fine. You can't say whiteness had to dictate all the way. The, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't. It irritates me when people's like, no, there has to be something in, in your blood that shifted the way. No, your hair is yeah. like. Yeah, no, hey, let's, let's move on because the hair is very emotional. It Never. is. Louder for a yeah, while, you have to speak louder. <laughs> I, you have to use an after, accent. After I cut my hair, I felt like I needed to try a little harder than when I did have my hair. But now that I'm owning it, and I think it also comes with insecurities. When I was insecure about my, because my hair was very short and I cut it. When it's insecure, people around me were insecure. Yeah. White folk were insecure. Nobody spoke to me. My hair was cold. Oh, whoa, actually, cold was cold. You know what I mean? But with my long hair, everybody presumed that I was colored. Even black girls. And I said, no, there's someone in my family who was probably white. Then that gave them comfort. With me. Guys, yeah. Yeah, well, the, 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 she just said when, that when she told a black girl that, that there was white blood in her family, it made a black girl feel better that she wasn't as pretty. I need to go to welcome as pretty as she is because she was closer to the. Yeah, I saw I a lot of I saw about insecurity. And yes. Yes. That's, that's it's what, sad. Mm, yes. It's sad. It's, it's sad. It's sad. It's sad. It, it says a lot about us. I mean, mm. co contrary to all of you, I cut my hair um, and I'm, I have an afro, but I'll never show it because unfortunately, unlike them, I'm just not there yet. And I'm, 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 I'm even a bit saying it out here, but I'm just not there yet. And I'm yeah. sure there's a lot of you who are not there yet. And it's okay, it's, it's our really journey. Good. And I pray I get there Definitely. and I pray you get there. I think we're gonna need a part two though because it's already 24 minutes. I think I'm, only, I'm even gonna skip a question. I don't know if I should skip this question. Don't skip it. Okay, so we've got insecurities, right? Yes. And and these insecurities arise from the fact, Yoguti, we've seen something that we think is perfect, and so now what we have does not align to that perfect image. Yes. Because for me to be insecure about my ears, I should have seen smaller ears and thought that that's yes. better. Yes. You know, I could have seen the fact that you know Mkhaba and Eloya Ghana Mkhaba. So when your insecurities came up in your life, what was it, I, and and um, how do you deal with them? Okay, um, so I will start off when I was in prep school. I have a very big bump. Any prep school? What are you, great, oh, what are you saying? I'm getting why? I mean, like a, a prep oh, school? Me? Uh, primary school. Oh, primary school. Now it. Um, okay, so I naturally have a big bump, guys. Yes, like, yes. Big bump, great bump, like a bump. Ne? We're gonna show it down the end. Like I get <laughs> And um, as much as now society has moved to, or rather not moved because it was always there, but it bec it, it has become like you know a, a subculture. Mm. Um, to and not even necessarily accommodating, it has become a subculture that we want a small waist and a big bump. I grew up with a big bump, and when I was younger, in like I said, prep school, it was an issue for me. Like, it was such a big issue. I hated it. I, it made it, it made me feel very insecure because of you know the thin ideal, um, and the thin ideal dictates that you've got small boobs. You've got not a big bum, definitely not a big bum because that was taboo. But you know it's a reasonable size, and my bum is not a reasonable size, guys. It doesn't. It takes up space, um, and that made me not like that. For for my son. Okay. Definitely not like that. It's a great movie. But it's um, it, it, I was very insecure about it's it. Very, very insecure about it. And I remember even with sports, like I played hockey um, and netball. And in in netball, it was kind of cute, you know, because then that's when all the boys come. But I didn't really care what the boys said. My issue was the change room. And the change room, because it was when girls would say, but oh, his bum is so big. And you know, when you wear like pleated skirts, it's long in the front and then at the back it's short because your bum is big and they can't really make a special design for you. So I felt very, very insecure about it. Ever since I was small, I think I was like, the first time I realized how insecure I was about the size of my bum was like eight years old. 
and nobody at home ever made it an issue like I never noticed I had a big bum until I got to school and I was exposed to people of different body shapes and then they also their ideals about what is beautiful what is the perfect shape then influence mine because then like I said there was a whole thin ideal and then I realized I don't fit into the thin ideal and as Zoe was saying that because subculture has moved towards you know big booty small waist even so, like Govan was saying, it's more accommodating. I still don't feel like now I'm like, ah, it's my time to shine, you know, because it's, it's not about that for me. It's not about like, oh, okay, we finally us big booty people were being celebrated. Yeah. It's not about that for me. Like for me, it had to come with accepting that regardless, guys. My bum is not going anywhere. Like it's, it's not given. going anywhere. It's, it's a just, blessing. It's just there. And it's it's very easy for people that don't have the bum to say, no, but it's nice. It, yo, 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 it's so bright. But it really isn't. So basically, that's when my insecurities arose. I just got this, guys. Can you Yeah, because it? it's now it's a sort of generation. Oh, it's 30 minutes. minutes, guys. Sorry. So yeah, that's when my insecurities arose. But basically, what I'm trying to say is it comes with accepting what you look like mm -hmm. and finding out what beauty is for you mm -hmm. and if you feel beautiful about it. But shout out to the big booty squad. Talk, talk to the leg. Um, I just want to say quickly, it's her turn, but I'm going to say this quickly. My insecurity was definitely my hair and my nose. Ew, don't, don't have the tension there. And hers was a bum. And it's so crazy how most black people, it's very black features yes. that are our yes. biggest insecurities. No. It's louder for the people and in the back. That just hurts me a lot. I, I cannot elaborate because of time and I want everyone to speak. But also you just watching this, just be aware of your insecurities. And if it has anything to do with your skin or your genetics as a black person. Deep, deep. That's a note to just yeah. find out. Well, are you ready for me? Oh wow, I recognize you. Uh, <laughs> we say, I'm not gonna be long. So for me, it was my nose, but it was the people in my household. Can you believe it? Yes, can I can. you believe it? Black people so, and body shaming. How holy? Same one. So um, for me, I was seven years old. My grandmama and my mama and me have the exact same body structure. Smaller boobs. Well, I had a big bust when I was 12 because of my paternal side of the family. But it's smaller boobs, small waist, big bum. That's how I came out of the womb, yes. right? And my cousins used to cut me slack for a bit. I was seven years old when my parents were getting married. We were doing a fitting dress. Dress fitting. That's the one. It ain't my language. And um, the dress was not fitting the way it should fit on your seven year old body. And this lady and my cousins are like, But your bum is in the way. Mm. I'm seven years old. But I you? have not menstruated. Yeah, my Gently. boobs have not developed. It's not even puberty. Right? Guys. So it's like, What are you saying? What, what are you saying to a seven year old? Like, already you're giving me a problem that I didn't even realize was a problem. Mm. That's the problem. And then my <laughs> nose was in the household. Everybody had like, Everybody in my family has got these noses, guys. They're called Malawian noses. Malawian noses. Yes, they're, they're like, you know, like this. And I, for a while, I was like, every time someone asked me, if you got a million rand, what would you do? I was like, I'd fix my nose. Yes, I'd make my bum I was 13 years old. If you gave me a million rand, I would fix my nose. I was 16, I'd fix my nose. I'm 22, I ain't gonna touch it. Right? So, I also realized that when, when you're educated about something, you make better choices. Yes. Right? This whole features thing, like Zoe mentioned, is the, it's the most blackest features that we want to change. But if you look at how we are placed climatically, we are we have these big nostrils because we're in Africa. Guys, we need to can listen. I just tell you something? Yes. If they had given us small noses like your friend Sarah up here in sub Sahari, how you are gonna you die yes. because you have no prophylizer airway to receive the air. Yes. Okay, yes. so you finna die? Yes, so if you think about that, geographically where we are placed as people of this continent, we need bigger nostrils to feed air and cool down our brains because it's hot smart, air, guys. right? Mm. White folk need their small noses because it's cold up there in Iceland, so they don't need a lot of cool air to cool down their brains. You understand what I'm saying? It's those kind of things. So when you, once you educate about something, you, you kind of accept it. But also, we don't need to get to that point where we need to explain where we are. Just accept yourself. Yeah. This is when she says, yeah, I'm going to be brief. Um, yeah, so uh, I was insecure about my entire body. I was a chubby, I was a fat, I was a fat um, primary school kid. Um, but it was pointed out by my mom first. And then I started like, because I was skinny and then like I hit grade one. And then you discover, you know, who am I <laughs> you're at home eating, yes. guys. Sure. Yeah. Sure. You're at home sure. eating, and that's when I started like loving food. Cause next time I did show firstly, and yeah, I started loving food, and yeah, I just.
the, the weight came on and I started developing a stomach and that's been my biggest insecurity my whole life and okay um, when I was 17 lost some weight and that's when I started like you know feeling myself but now obviously I'm a woman I go through different yeah. body things like every year there's something mm. I discover about my body that I'm like oh okay mm. you're there mm. um, so I think it's important for us to like try to love ourselves in every state mm. it's not it's, it's not easy. yeah it's not easy it's not guys like, self love I, yo, mm. I don't love myself every day but I'm saying okay. today's a bad day but just eat girl you, you, you're gonna get through it like mm. this thing's not gonna yeah it's not gonna bother you in a while mm. so mm. just let it bother you now and then you'll get over it. Mm. And I think also, like I was just thinking this week, Uguti, as much as I have insecurities about my body and what society has put there, out there, like the images that we see and that we're receiving, um, I'm chubby now, but I'm, I'm the aesthetic. So I'm aesthetically pleasing, even hey. though I'm a bigger size. Mm. So to me, like if I'm, a, what if I'm a different shape? Like what if I am top heavy? What if, um, yeah. My midsection is bigger than the guys, rest of my body. Guys, I'm sitting next to Lias. These ones are Lias. She's not big. Oh she God. really isn't she big. Guys, this guy like isn't look chubby. Look okay, okay. Maybe maybe it's it's yeah. Yeah. complex, but um, yeah, I guess. yeah, like I just think it's important for us to just shift to that and think, okay, this is like on the TV and in the magazine, this is not the only thing mm. that I'm seeing. Like there are others outside and we need to look at that. Like, yeah. Mm. Ladies, I don't even get to the last two questions. Uh, last one, not the last one, but the second last one. The, no, now I want to go for the last one. Okay. okay. Nah, but the thing is, my battery is dying. Ah, no, it's okay. So, okay, I need you to quickly just um, <laughs> tell us what would you have told your younger self? What, right now, what would you tell your younger Relax. self? Quickly, quickly, quickly. Relax. Like, just, it's, it's okay. It's in God's hands. I believe in God. So, it's in God's hands. Everything works out. And just love yourself. Relax. Mama. Me. Woo me younger um it's okay to have a big mouth yeah um it's okay to be smart and be black um you are you uh, and that's your power na na mani amen little mamu hey, bigger mamu to little mamu wow we are slayer or tasty or spice or ignorance <laughs> oh. okay we are slayer in all aspects like you can do this and even if you are an outlier it's the way god wants it to be amen Mama, so we i tell myself it's okay to be different and being opinionated as a black girl it's okay it's okay to be the awkward black girl it's okay to question my existence as a black girl hey, it doesn't mean i don't love myself um but i'm gonna make it right with my child hmm. and i hope we all do with our yeah. Child. yeah before i leave i'd like you to just remember you carry glory in you, you yes. carry a treasure in you, and you cannot be ignored. Till next time, have an abundant life. Watch me walk and talk. <laughs> Bye, guys.